Warning, this video contains an obscene amount of hot glue and viewer discretion is advised. Hello everyone and welcome to the 22nd episode of the Blind Pinterest Challenge, the series where I recreate crafts from Pinterest with no instructions. Because it's fun. <laughs> okay, so jumping straight in, I think the first craft idea that I want to recreate is this moon pinata. And it has given me basically the instructions on how to make it. But I think I would come to the conclusion to make it that way anyway, just out of cardboard. And I know Michael's been wanting us to make a pinata for quite a while. So this can be our request sorted as well, Michael. And by the looks of things, they don't fill it with like sweets or anything. I think I'll fill mine with sweets and smash the shit out of it. That's what you're supposed to do with a pinata. Okay the second one that I want to make is this one and it's very ambiguous because obviously they don't show you the finished result but I have seen things floating around before and I think if you just hammer loads of flowers onto a bit of paper you can get some quite nice art from it. The colours are supposed to transfer from the flowers onto the paper. So I'm quite curious to see if it'll work and what the finished thing will look like but that's the image I'm working with so can't really feel it, can I? There's nothing to compare it to. The third craft project I'm thinking about making are these garden balls. And I've seen these floating around on Pinterest for a while now. And it looks kind of like a mosaic pattern, but it also looks like they've maybe stuck marbles or beads on. And I don't really understand the purpose of them, but I think they look quite fun and quite cool. So I'm definitely gonna give that a go. And I think for the final craft project, I'm going to be making this. And if you look closely at it, it looks as if it's magnetic because obviously they've stuck certain things to it. I don't really know. I'm assuming it's like a metal pan and then they've painted it with blackboard paint and then obviously tied the ribbon around it. I think that's what they've done anyway. That's where my brain's going. And I, th I think it's quite a cool idea actually. And I think it'll be quite easy to make as well. And I think it's quite a creative idea. I like it. I'm not mad at it at all. Well, until I make it and probably make it wrong, but we'll see. Okay, I'm back. And I thought I'd jump straight into one that I feel like I've struggled quite a lot with. And it's a bloody pinata. I knew I was gonna struggle with it. As soon as I said I was gonna make it, deep down, I was regretting it. So first up, I just took an old bit of cardboard and roughly drew an outline of a moon. Already off to an awful start. And then I just cut that out with a pair of scissors and hey presto, I've got a moon shape. And I just did that exact same process. And just like magic, I've got a second one. Next up, I just used some very flexible corrugated card to glue these two pieces of moon shapes together. And obviously I just used a shitload of hot glue for the entire thing. I think in their original pin they used tape, but I thought hot glue would be way better and it wasn't. And obviously their original pinata was covered in this fringe-like white paper. So I just took some regular cartridge paper and cut it into a fringy strip kind of thing. And obviously I had to do that loads and loads of times. And then the next step was again way more hot gluing and just hot glued all these strips of paper onto this moon shape. And I didn't record the entire thing because it was taking us absolutely ages to make. So I stuck all the fringe paper on, off camera, all the rest of it, and also added some other decorative materials. So we have expectation. And reality. And I don't think you're gonna see this very well, but there's some beads dangling off the bottom there. And it just, it, it, it almost, no, it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm lying to myself. I was just about to say it looks almost like theirs. No, it doesn't. Stop lying. I think their original one looks far more elegant than what mine does. And I think the reason for that is because I think they might have used tissue paper and not cartridge paper. I think that's where I've gone wrong. So it just looks really boxy and just square. It looks similar to what they've done, just like a really half-assed version. And because this took me so long to make, I wasn't going to make a black star to suspend from it and stuff. So I just used some just normal beads as just kind of a placeholder for that. But yeah, it just it just looks really rough, doesn't it? It looks incredibly rough. And I know in the first part of this video, I said I was going to fill it with candy and smash the shit out of it. But this took me about five hours to make, if not longer. It took me ages. Even though I don't like it, and I would prefer to smash it up, I just, I can't bring myself to it. I might do it another day, but right now, no. There was just so much energy put into this. However, it's not all dooming gloom because this pinata cost me absolutely nothing to make. 
Yes, I already had everything I needed in the studio to make this. So at least it makes us feel a little bit better at how shitty it looks. It was the cartridge paper that let us down. That's what I'm blaming it on. It's not my fault. Here okay, next up we have the garden balls. And for this I just bought a regular polystyrene ball to act as the base. And I bought a bunch of these different coloured plastic beads in red, white and black. And I think these will look quite nice as a garden ball. I think that'll be a nice colour scheme. And now it was just time for a crap ton of hot glue. And I got this far into it and I thought it was looking so good. I thought it was looking really great. Unfortunately, I was running out of beads. I didn't have enough to cover this entire thing. So my only solution was to incorporate a brand new, different kind of bead in that I was actually planning on using for a second garden ball because I completely underestimated how many beads it was going to take to cover one of these bloody polystyrene balls. It took so many beads. So then it was just time for way more hot gluing. <laughs> So we have expectation and reality. And if my garden ball had just been like this, I would have absolutely loved it. But obviously, like I said, I ran out of beads. So when you go all the way around, it just looks a little messier. But I'm still kind of into it, you know. I just, I just, ah, that's just such a missed opportunity, isn't it? And I nearly ran out of the other beads as well. So I was lucky to even do one. I did even buy a second polystyrene ball because I honestly thought I was gonna have enough. I was so excited to have some massive beaded tits. And now I've only got one. One beaded one and one just plain white one. It's not fair. And it feels amazing. Like if you were here right now and you could caress my ball, Nope. <laughs> you would love it. It feels just so tactile and nice. So many innuendos coming out my mouth. I should be ashamed. But I haven't tallied up how much this actually cost us. And I have a feeling it cost me a fortune. <laughs> Times three. <laughs> Okay, when I said this cost me a lot of money, I'm absolutely shocked at how much this actually cost. So this ball here, mainly because of the beads and how many it took, cost me... <laughs> I don't even want to say it because it's so embarrassing. Cost me £63.42. and pence. <sighs> Just wow. As much as I love it and as much as it feels so great, it's not worth 63 quid at all. I also suffered so many glue burns making this, it's unreal. <sighs> But anyway, let's move on to the next one. Okay, so time to try out some flower art. And I've got some bits of cardboard here because I pre-thought that if I'm hammering directly onto the table, my hammer will end up going through the table. So I've thought ahead for once. I'm also gonna use two bits of paper because on theirs they used like a bit of cling film or something. But if you use two bits of paper, then you get two prints. I also bought a bouquet of flowers from the shops while I was there because there isn't a particularly massive variety of wild flowers grown where I live. And I want this to look as good as it possibly can be and have the potential to look good. So I bought a collection. Some might think smashing flowers is very disrespectful to nature. And you know, I'd probably disagree with you. But that's what I'm doing. So I just want to cut all the heads off these flowers. I think I'm just going to make one big print. Right, so I think we just place these flowers wherever we want them, really. I'm not sure whether this is going to look good, whether it's going to look awful, because I had very little to work with from the original pin. Okay, I think that's a nice arrangement. Okay, and then just lay this second bit of paper over the top. Okay, let's hammer and see what happens. I think this is an easy way to do than a hammer, actually. I've already gone through the paper. It's gonna have a little peek. Doesn't look good so far. I can also really smell the pollen, so it's gonna set my hair fever off. I have a feeling this is gonna look shit. I don't even want to show you it because it looks... I don't think it's worked. Well, there's number one. You might not even be able to see that because it's so subtle, but it's just some green dots. I don't think these have done anything either. It's done absolutely... 
absolutely nothing. There's no colour that's come off it. Ah. There's some colour if I just use a normal hammer on it. I'm gonna have to improvise. Let's just see if I do this. Nah, I think this is a shit idea. I really do. You might not be able to see that up here in this little corner. There's a little bit of pigment that's come off one of the flower petals. But other than that, it's just... I would say it's a complete waste of time. I'll get rid of these flowers one sec. I'll show you what it looks like. It's really set my hair fever away as well. Oh my god, my nose is so itchy. So we have expectation. Which obviously isn't much. Reality. That's what you get from it. So you get absolutely nothing. You get a tiny little bit of transfer. But other than that, it's a complete waste of time. Now there might be some secret tricks that I don't know to make this work. I was just going off their image of hammering flowers to a bit of paper. But if you've ever done this before and you've got a way better result and you know I've done something wrong, then let me know in the comments because I don't have a clue. And this complete waste of time cost me £5.60. Money not well spent at all. But I did get to enjoy that bouquet of flowers for about a week. So, you know. That was nice. Okay, moving on to the final craft project of today's episode. But before we do that, it's time for a highly anticipated redundancy update. So I had my second consultation at work. It didn't go well at all. So I've got a third consultation booked in for, I think next week or the week after. And we'll go from there. Will I become jobless? What will happen to my life? Stay tuned. It's like a really shitty soap opera, isn't it? Like a proper cheesy, like 70s, 80s. Just really shitty, depressing soap opera. But you know, the good old saying, when life gives you lemons, just throw them in the bin. I don't want the lemons, I don't want them at all. Anyway, let's move on to this next craft project. So for this DIY chalkboard sign, I just bought this metal pan and I think it'll work pretty well for this. I don't think I'll have any problems. And I just bought a little tin of blackboard paint and then painted the inside of this cake tin with the blackboard paint and left that to dry. Once it was dry, it looked a little bit like this, dried paint. And I also bought some blue and white striped ribbon, very similar to what they had in their original pin because I'm all about these little details. And then I just hot glued the ribbon to the pan and tied it into an awful bow at the top. And I swear, in this video, I must have gone through about a million glue sticks. So we have expectation. And reality. And I think it looks pretty decent. It looks fine. However, there was a couple of mistakes I've made with this. For a start, the most appealing thing about this is the fact that it's magnetic and you can stick magnets to it. So I've got a lovely magnet here. The pan isn't the correct metal. It's not magnetic at all. I was just so annoyed. I don't know what it's made out of, but it's obviously, it's, I, I don't know. I'm not a scientist or a chemist or anything or a physician. A physician? Isn't that a doctor? You know what I'm talking about. But I did do some little doodles inside, you know, buy more craft supplies. That's always very important. And I drew like a little face and a tree and some stars. Another mistake I made is I stuck the bone and everything like that and I did the drawing on last. But for some reason when I hang it, I've drawn it on an angle. I've drawn it like really slanted. But if we tilt it, it looks perfectly fine. It's just, it's much better. We'll just keep it this way. So this cost me 22 pounds and 99 pence to make. And considering it worked out at like a third of the price of the garden ball, I think that says something about the garden ball, doesn't it? But I don't think it's too bad. I actually quite like it. I just wish it would be magnetic. I really do. I was so disappointed. That just about does it for today's episode of the Blind Pinterest Challenge. Hopefully you have enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up and let me know down in the comments which craft project was your favorite and whether you'll try it at home. If you want to make a garden ball, just try and source some cheaper beads. I didn't do myself any favours. I, I ripped myself off with this one. But anyway, I'll see you next week for a brand new video.